Hey YouTube, what's up guys? It's Flom here with another episode of Scoped Up. Today we're going to be looking at Nuke. You know, with the changes they made to the map, not much has changed in terms of what I like to do. But nonetheless, I figured you guys would be looking for some information now that they changed Nuke, so I figured this guide would help. So as always guys, today we're going to be looking at CT side. We're going to be going over a aggro ramp peak, a very aggressive hut push, and a quick route to secret outside to get you in position for teams that are taking fast outside control. So for the ramp peak guys, you're going to want one of the front spawns. You don't need too much utility and you're going to want at least one teammate with you. The route is pretty obvious, you know, you just had to ramp. The things you need to be mindful of is if the team is taking fast ramp, you need to bail out immediately. I just like to throw one simple flash off this corner and then I peek. So the point of that flash, it's not really like to blind anybody holding this because quite frankly, most people don't hold this angle right here because they're exposed to the back part of ramp. Now, if an opera peeks this, more than likely you'll actually catch them off guard by peeking at a slightly different angle and you'll be much faster and how you peek since you're closer on the angle. The second thing is, is the reason why we throw that flash is there are some times where people will carelessly jump across ramp. That's what your flash is good for. And when you blind them, obviously, you know, if they come all the way across you can either make the decision to try to full commit and pick them off or you can accept that that guy got across you got some early info but it's not worth trying to full commit to kill that guy If a team's been playing the rounds really slow, this is a great thing to mix in there because it's a very risky play. I am extremely comfortable with doing. I enjoy opping in close range situations. So for me, this fits my play style. This is not going to be for everybody. So the hot push, just like the ramp peak, you need a good spawn. I personally just, you know, come up through heaven. No nades usually because it's, it's more of like a tell. I jump on the silo, I come down, and then I scope right here. Right when I enter into the door, I'm scoped up and I'm, then I'm, I'm moving in and I'm just inching in because they more than likely didn't hear a scope at the start of the round because nades going off glass breaking and this gives you a very safe route and actually since they change how the hut works and the position of the hut and uh emo being removed inside hut you have actually a much safer pathway for picking into here this isn't something where i would advise you holding here the entire round but if you get into this position and they have no idea you're here be patient wait for somebody to come across you're in a really dangerous position Obviously the downsides of this push is when you're trying to come into hut at the start of the round If the other team is trying to rush you need to bail out immediately I would advise you to try to get back behind the silos and post up here as you still have a pretty decent fighting position It's not great. You can get you know naded pretty easily flashed really easily But it's much better than being in a hut and four rifles, you know right in front of you Now, when you're coming out of spawn, I'm gonna show you guys the smoke that I like to throw. Basically, I follow along this close wall, and then while I'm crossing outside, I'm putting my crosshair in the middle of these two wires, and I'm running and throwing, and just following my smoke, and then I'm throwing one extra flash over, and I'm crossing to secret almost immediately. And what I'm doing is, is I'm coming here and I'm posting on red. So all this does is that smoke early kind of denies information if they are there and then I'm throwing a flash on top of that for anybody trying to get boosted over the boxes as a terrorist and completely eliminates them from having any information that I'm here. Normally in this position you'll be able to get one maybe even two before they can even really pinpoint where you're at because most teams when you get a pick from here are going to assume that you're in secret stairs and not in this position so they may carelessly push into you even further thinking that they know exactly where you are. If you're really really in a sticky situation you need to rely on your teammates to get you out you can maybe try to toss a flash and then jump down and jump away you know I did mention that you could also do this with a rifle so what I mean by that is you can do the same exact nade set and then you can play around here in this corner or like on these off angles for when they come secret it's a very powerful position and if you do the nade set correctly it's very hard to get you out of this position and for you not to get more than likely two kills on the enemy team So guys, starting on the T side, we have three picks that we're going to be looking at. We're going to be doing a hut peek. I'll be showing you the nade squeaky and the squeaky pick at the start of the round. And last but not least for the T side, I'll be showing you guys a little boost you can do that can help you get an outside pick onto the enemy opper or anybody for that matter trying to cross outside. So 
So the hut peak is spawn dependent. You want a very front spawn for this. You don't really need too many nades. This is a very risky peak. Um, I actually like to do it when my team rushes upper as well. So you come into hut and you just take this angle and you just peek into rafters. When you go for this pick, you need to be very aware of what you're hearing at the start of the round. If you hear somebody land on silo, or if you hear somebody land on the ground, either pre-scope the ground, or maybe cancel out of the pick altogether because you just don't want to risk it and you're pretty confident he's not actually crossing the rafters. However, if you're sure that he did not land on the ground or not silo and he more than likely is going to cross rafters, they will almost guarantee give you a free pick if they do not molly into the hut at the start of the round. A lot of players, especially after they get comfortable, say they've won a few rounds, or just you know are getting a little lazy it's a great way to sneak in there when they're being lazy and make it 5v4 for your team the squeaky pick you need a nade otherwise you can't do it at all and that's really it otherwise it's pretty self-explanatory enter into the lobby the spawn doesn't matter too much although the better the spawn the more likely you are to catch him crossing out of mini you nade off the a once you nade off the A, you come here and you peek into mini. This is such a powerful pick, guys. You are very safe from anybody from inside the bomb site, especially because nobody can cross the middle beam. And the guy that is going to play hut, you know, more than likely is on top of hut at the earliest and still can't see you. Nobody can see you from the floor and nobody is crossing from sight into mini. So all you have to worry about is what is directly in front of you and you know that you are safe from the other positions. The only thing you need to be aware of is that if you do end up missing the shot, either be aware that he may end up wide swinging you knowing that you miss, so maybe take a more defensive position ready for him to wide swing into you, or completely bail out obviously and reapproach the round and rescope in and discuss with your team further what you guys want to do in that round. So this last peak outside guys is not necessarily spawn dependent but you know the better the spawn it always helps so at the start of the round you just head on outside you're gonna just come out here and you're gonna jump on your teammates head and when you do that you're changing up the elevation of your peak and you're just gonna peek in the big garage this changes where you're peeking the other opera from and depending on what angle he's on if he's holding a more passive angle for when your teammates cross outside you'll actually be able to see him before he sees you the other thing is when you're in this position you can also peek credit card credit card is also another powerful position and you need to be very careful of slow peeking into that angle now after peeking outside, you'll have great information for your team knowing that nobody crossed Big Garage, you know that they're all on the left side and that the only way that they can come up now is through secret. That's a lot of information for your team. You just cleared out and got a lot of map control and it allows your team to proceed forward confidently knowing that the enemy team can only be in a few spots. All right, guys, that wraps up this episode of Scoped Up on Nuke. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. As always, guys, please leave a like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. You guys are beautiful, and I'll see you in the next episode.